Would you like to know which are the skills hiring managers and recruiters look for in an MBA? If you have said yes, then please watch this video till the very end. Hello and Namaste. This is Puneet Modgil of MBSpark.com. Based on my global and professional experience, I have shortlisted the core skills employers look for in an MBA. I call these six core skills as Success Essentials 4.0 or six pack MBA. Recently, I shared these with V School, formerly known as Wellingcar Institute of Management. I would love your feedback and comments on if you find them relevant in your journey after you have watched the entire video. So without further ado, let's find out more about the six pack MBA or Success Essentials 4.0. So I have done a lot of work in this area. I have not built anything new. It's not a new discovery. I have begged, borrowed, cut, copy, pasted from many experiences. And when you are in your project mode in your MBA lecture, when you are going through your interaction with students, you will be exhibiting anyway by default one of these six. If not all six, but primary one or two, and then others will be all there. So whenever you are a professional, whenever you are a speaker, whenever you're a listener, whenever you are in your career, these six things are always around you. One of them is primary and the other could be secondary. You could have two primary skills that you're operating with. So what are those six skills employers are looking for? So first of all, many professionals I've spoken to and many interviews I have seen, and you can check it out for our Indian captain, earlier Indian captain Mahindra Singh Dhoni, Virat Kohli, you can go to Peter Drucker, you can go to any person who tracks high performance or success as we call it. It's, it's about fixing the process. It's not just about getting fixated on the end goal. End goal is important, but fixing what you do today is very important. I must tell you, I read this uh, Karmane Vadhikaraste quote when, when I was very young. You know, this is part of our Srimad Bhagavad Gita uh, book lectures, very famous quote. And it says, don't worry about the result, focus on the task at hand today, do your karma without attachment. And I wouldn't get it. I would not get it. I was very young. I said, what is the reason, right? Anything I'm doing is for a result. But look at what happened with Corona. Our best intentions didn't get the results. Our best put plans didn't get the results. So results, I totally believe in post-corona world, are not in your control. In fact, you can influence them, but no, there's no direct control. So the only control you have is what you do in the moment at that particular point in time. So before I share with you the six essential skills, it's a journey. It's not that, you know, your success as a milestone of your journey. It's not the end goal. Many of you will think, oh, if I have 10 crore rupees, I'll just retire. But that's the outcome. That's the, uh, not the end goal, there's a difference. Let's continue and delve deeper. So let's go forward. Critical thinking. Gehen Soch, if you understand Hindi. Are you a thinker? Are you able to evaluate all possible sides of a problem, issue, anything you see around you? Are you curious to go out and find out the other viewpoint? Many times in our social media, in the newspaper, in the narratives around us, in brand stories, you'll hear one perspective and you'll feel, oh, this sounds like the person I am and that's the right way to go forward. We are looking for more and more of professionals, young professionals like you, who cannot just go by their own, what we call as confirmation bias. This is what I know, this is good for us, this is the way we'll do it. But we're looking for folks who put in the ability to evaluate multiple perspectives. You know, there's an ancient Indian way of critical thinking, there's an ancient Greek way of critical thinking, Socrates and then Chanakya. So idea for you is to build your capability as a critical thinker. If you present it with a viewpoint, can you challenge it? But not just challenge it for heckling or trolling, but do you have a other viewpoint on that particular equation? Are you able to bring in your intelligence and your understanding of the situation? So this is one of the most underinvested skills with young professionals. Let's go to the number two uh, skill and it's collaboration. I shared with you earlier that we're not looking for individual top performers. 
In fact, if you look at General Electric, one of the most respected companies in American history, they had a two by two matrix, a good performance and good values, bad performance and bad values. And they said we would prefer low performance, but with good values person, give him a second chance to improve their performance. But if you're a good performance, but low on values, we would like to see if we can transition you out. So collaboration is one of the areas where how you work with people. How do you take them along? Also, everybody wants to be a leader, but are you also a good follower? If you commit something to your group team or project team or your faculty or your campus, saying it'll be done by Wednesday 3 o'clock, does it get done by Wednesday 3 o'clock? What is your accountability to every task you agree to doing? Yeah, you may have discussions and differences that I won't do this, but once you have said, okay, on my part, I'll step in, then you don't hold back, then you give it the best you have. So collaboration, teamwork, these are not just buzzwords. By the way, a lot of our tests we'll do to you as hiring companies, hiring managers, are looking at all these factors. Collaboration is a key one on that one. Third is creativity. Are you curious enough to do something? Are you looking at different aspects? Now, there are tools and frameworks and technologies around you to help you. For example, design thinking is a very new process methodology to help you look at things around you in a very different fashion and ask those critical questions. But creativity, being able to think. Now we are at number three skill out of the six and you would say, can anybody be good at all of them? No. Do you need to be good at all of them at all times? No. But this is the awareness I want you to leave you with that whenever you're in a situation, you can pull out one of these from the six pack. This is my six pack for you and think about which one do I need to exhibit right now? So creativity is one part. If you think there's a better way, do not hold back. Please say that to your boss, faculty, your batchmates, teammates, and customers. We love that part. When somebody thinks, that, by the way, there's no box, there's no inside the box, there's no outside the box. The box is just your mind. So how do you explore that? Now there are tools you can train them this with. Your mind is infinite. It's all within you, as some philosophers said. It's not outside of you. Whatever is inside of you reflects based on external situations. So how do you build your creative attributes? It's not just about painting or taking a picture. If, you, if you're creative, coding is also very creative if you, if you know software programmers. The, the technology we're using, all of this that's happening to us, it's also part of creative. Uber is creative and Ola is creative. All of these are creative new ideas. So creativity is also another part that we look at very, very seriously when we look at uh, hiring young employees or managers in our teams. So if you go to number four, communication. Again, not to be confused with language skills. We don't want you to be 10 out of 10 on English. Yes, English is our language of communication in India for business. It's likely to stay like that for a long time. But I must tell you, a lot more gets done in English and local languages. So don't get fixated by English, fix the articulation. What is that idea you have inside of you that you want to present? And what's the best way to present? I have learned a lot. I, I just soak in ideas. And some of those ideas actually, I'm demonstrating to you as we go along. So you have to be very, very good. And communication starts with number one, listening. Are you listening to the question being said? Or are you listening to the question that you want to respond immediately. This is the difference. And there will be techniques and workshops as part of your MBA experience. And you can take additional inputs to improve this part, communication. It's not about language skills. Important language skills, but how you get along with people in the real world is equally important. So I would now move to selling skills. And this is the big one. When I present the selling skills, a lot of MBA school students will say, sir, selling sales? finance right? But in the new world, you're always selling, actually. Selling your idea, selling your capability. When you're going for your appraisal interview, right? After one year of your work experience in a top-notch company, how, do you, how are you gonna ask for a raise? So asking for a raise is a selling skill. Asking for better rate on the car you're gonna buy when you have new money in your bank, is a selling skill. Asking for a better contract is a selling skill. Your first job after MBA, doesn't matter if you've done finance, etc. If you can take on an opportunity of a sales role, I think that'll serve you really well as part of your MBA career. 
sales are very high growth roles and sales teaches you a lot more lessons every day and i must tell you i have been blessed to start my career as a sales person one of those rocket sync types uh, and i must tell you it serves you in the long term i became a marketer i'm always looking back uh, and it's the most enjoyable part because you have you get to travel a lot you get a lot of exposure so i would not say just become a sales person but have those selling skills attributes in your in your profile as we go along so that was my second last and the last one is the leadership i was uh, when i was asked to come here and talk to students of willingkar i went on to your insta feed uh, for the institute and i saw five lessons or was it eight lessons you can learn from dhoni the reason i put this this slide up is there are two different individuals very distinctively different they play the same game they play by the same rules they play with the same uniform but if i was to ask anyone if you or most of you to write me a 100 word on dhoni versus kohli i can tell you almost all of you will be at least able to do a video blog for me so there are two things here very distinctive styles of leadership there's nothing right or wrong about them both are endearing to us if i was to ask you hey guys let's do a quick poll which one of these two is your uh, favorite dhoni or uh, kohli i think it'll be split sometimes it's kohli uh, 80% 20% dhoni depends on which part of the town you uh, which which part of the world you are in but it's usually both uh, kohli is as highly rated as dhoni of course dhoni is now retired so leadership is about change about leading people towards change leadership is not management so though you will learn how to manage i would say in the two years you're here can you inspire others can you lead them can you be a good follower first so leadership as a skill will come to everyone it doesn't matter if you're an individual contributor or a manager it is demonstrated in everything you do it's your state of mind and not how many people report to you